All right. Remember, I'm not starting these videos with, I'm not starting with okay. You're like, okay, well you did all right. All right, guys, seriously. All right, I quit my job. Well, I kind of got fired. Man, it's hard being a CEO and then going to work for other people. I think I might. I don't want to. I don't want to say that. Check this out. This is from my mom. Check this out, mom. Told you this is. Uh, this is out here. I don't know. Hey, you better love my mom. You better like this video. All right, mom. There you go. There's train. Talk to my mom. Check this out. Isn't that beautiful? One well, of the few places you'll see the beach. Fourteen pier, surfers and a train. All right, mom. Thanks for talking to me. You're like, you better think your mom. You talk all the fucking time. You're like, hey, I'm gonna tell you, let me tell you something. Talk all the time. You better believe it. Talk all the time. You're like, well, you talk like way too much. You like, you need to be like, fuck you. All right. You're like, fuck you. Yeah. Well, not you, mom. Seriously, mom, I love you. You know, let's talk about, you know, Okay, I got. Let me tell you something I learned. You're like you're always telling me something you learned. Fuck you! I'll tell you something I learned. Wisdom. Even the Bible says wisdom cries out, and you should seek it like it's a ruby, gold. You're like I don't care about wisdom. I just want LOLs. Fuck you! I don't have them today. I don't have LOLs. I got just pain, bitch. Quit my job. Man, seriously, I was a CEO. I built a company from zero to half a million dollars. And people come in. They run these lousy-ass companies. And I said, I want a job description. And they're like, what's a job? No, I want a job description. You're gonna hold, I'm going to hold you accountable. They're like, no, nah, we don't like that. Seriously, okay, this is something I learned. I'm still waiting for the train. And you're like, yeah, so you can jump in front of it. Okay, there you go. Still waiting for the train. Let me tell you something I learned. You just never know where you're going to learn some some wisdom You know, I could talk about the 12 steps and talk about all the stuff there. And I'm sure I'll share you tons of stuff from the 12 steps. I might even talk about Johnny Cash, Walk the Line, the train song, baby. Here you go, Mom. Mom, seriously, I love you. Thanks for listening to me ramble. There's a train. Here you go, baby. All right. Let me tell you something I learned. We did this. Let's go back. All right, let's go back. You know what? I'm kind of getting burnt out on this song. There you go, Mom. This train. Love you. Seriously, thanks for listening to me. She's like, I listen forever. No, really, I love my mom. You know, we have one of those weird relationships. You know, we just, we're really good friends. We're kind of becoming friends. And, you know, kind of, a, I won't share the whole story. But, you know, anyway, she's my mom. Love her. Okay, here's the thing. I learned something, and um, yeah, by the way, you know, there's no better person to be a, a business consultant than me, and it's because I grew a company from zero to half a million dollars, and I did it in the most com- one one of the top three most competitive spaces out there. You know, these CEOs out there, dude. There's like CEOs like Yahoo, like the Marissa chick, who, you know, that's not that's not a CEO. That's you know, look at how Marissa did Yahoo. You know, a CEO is a person in the kitchen that builds that company from nothing, you know, grows it. And often we're not the most charming people. Like, I mean, I don't want to compare myself to Steve Jobs, but that's a CEO. You build that shit from nothing. And then when you go to the corporate space, they don't like you. And you're not a real CEO until you are getting fired from your own company. I think Steve Jobs is one of the best CEOs maybe in the last 200 years. I mean, tell me another CEO. Here's another CEO that I really like, Dana White. He's built the UFC from $2 million to $40 billion in 16 years. I mean, that's holla. That's holla right there. All right. So anyway, I don't want to burn it on myself. But seriously, you know, I've grown a company from zero to half a million and grown it for 10. I mean, how many people even grow a company for two years, three years? I did 10 years, dude. Then I went to my custody dispute, hashtag 2503. And I was just burnt out on finance. I mean, I'm, you know, innately a finance guy. I mean, that's why I'm really good at trading and there's no human, there's no better trader than me. I just didn't go to one of those Ivy League schools. 
when you apply for trading jobs, they want to see Ivy League shit. They don't care about experience. But here, San Francisco, you find me any trader. I'm not talking a real trader. I could not trade because I've just I've spent so much time learning Fibonacci retracements. Fibonacci, if that's your name, is Fibonacci. Holla, baby. All right, guys. So you know I, I was done with my company Dodd Frank custody dispute. You know the story. So now I'm like, you know, I'm kind of going through that midlife a little bit where I'm like, you know, I want to do something I really, really enjoy doing. And I don't want to live behind a computer anymore. I don't want to spend 90% of my time in Outlook. I don't want to spend 90% of my time emailing. I'm good with people. I'm a great teacher. I'm charming as fuck. Cuss a little bit. I love Jesus. The problem is I love Jesus, but I cuss too much. By the way, if you want a pastor, love Jesus. I don't want to be a pastor. But I want to be a Bible teacher. I love sharing the wisdom of the Bible, but I just say fuck too much. Anyway. So I really would like to be like a Joyce Meyer type where you kind of come in. And I kind of even think I'm a prophet too. And, you know, and I've talked about the difference between a what's the difference between a, a pastor and a prophet? Well, a, a pastor is that comforting, sweet, Rome, you know, Psalms 23. They like the book of Romans. You got to chart. You know, they don't forget to turn their car off. Pastors kind of come in with a, with a purpose. We kind of come in and start problems. Like, let me use an example from the medical world. Um... A pastor is, is a comforting, a comforting person. A prophet comes in, and this is what I would do, is I would come in and say, all right, church, tell me some problems you're having that I can fix. And let me give, me, let me give my college try shot. And what I would do is I would learn what you're, and I could do this with the business too. I believe the prophetic voice really belongs really in and thrives outside the, the, the modern day church. And I could do this as I would come into your business, your church, and I would say, what are, what are the top two problems you have and give me an opportunity to fix that? So for example, if I were in a church, I would ask the people, you know, what's the problem we're having? And then let me try to solve it. And then if I fail to solve it, well, then you have the pastor's nice, sweet voice to lean back on. But if I you know, I, I just think there, there's so much um, wisdom in bringing an outside voice in. And some of these churches and these businesses, they become so incestual and so, so uh, you know, yes man. And, and you kind of see the, the same version. Like think of a car lot, a car, like car sales. It's the same personality with 20 different faces. And I would come in there and I would talk kind of from a non... Anyway, you get my point. So I would like to do more teaching. I could, uh, um, you know, just bring my skills because I really just want to work with people and teach. And man, if I could tell you some LOLs, if you change your mind, then I, I can play this song. See, this girl, I dated this girl and she burnt me all this music. Great white burden, hashtag MRA. That's what I should call the hashtag. You know, I was thinking about calling the MRA movement, hashtag MRA, the DAD, Dads Against Discrimination, hashtag 2503. Uh, but maybe I should call it the Great White Burden because, you know, they're... Never mind, don't get me on hashtag 2503. I'm trying to sell my consulting business. I'm like, shut up and talk about the wisdom you learned earlier. Remember, you're going to tell us something you learned. Okay, here you go. You never know where wisdom is going to show up. Here you go. I learned something watching... Um, uh, you know, who is that guy? Caesar Milan. You know, Caesar Milan, I know this sounds crazy, but this is an example of something I would say if I came to speak to your church or organization. Again, I believe wisdom is wisdom. Whether you get it from the Bible, or you get it from the 12 steps, or you get it from the Hala, Shakala, John, whatever. Here you go. Caesar Milan, if you are looking for parenting advice, and you've tried everything, go watch Caesar Milan. That guy is brilliant. He just plays better music. Anyway, Cesar Milan, if you're out there, I think you live in L.A. I'm here in San Diego I'm trying to find some good music to brag on Cesar Milan. I guess I'll just go over here. Like, I don't care. 
go back to this. I just like, this is a very melodic song. You're like, melodic? He uses the word melodic? Fuck him. Prophet melodic? John, that's call me Jonathan melodic. Just call me Jonathan. Here you go. Caesar Milan said, he said, uh, you always have to have boundaries and limitations. Boundaries and limitations. He talk, he, he's talking about training training dogs. But, you know, boundaries and limitations are so important. And, and, and I'll let him, in fact, Google that. In fact, you need to send him some love. I think he's not, I think he's having some problems. In fact, I even learned, I don't think he even owns his own name. He just, he's just so good at what he does that he doesn't really, he didn't really uh, hire the right of lawyer. So anyway, Cesar Milan, you're one of the best out there. Holla. Email me, tweet me at Fibonacci. But anyway, he talks about boundaries and limitations. And I took this job and kind of have my CEO hat on. It's kind of permanently in place. I'm trying to think like an employee, but it just didn't work. I lasted one day. Then I quit because I asked for a job description. I wanted them to tell me what the job really was, and they couldn't do it. I'm like, dude, if you can't tell me what this job is, how do you know when I'll win or how I'll succeed or how I'll fail? And what I realized is I, I was there enough to realize that they wanted me to do everything. I'm like, dude, I can't be all things to every person. That's a recipe for failure. So I wanted some limitations on the job. I said, give me, give me a full job description. And they thought that was kind of a cute idea. Then they said, no. And then I said, no, really, I wanted want a job description. Then they, I said, you know, then maybe I'm not your guy. Then they agreed with me. See, that's why I start companies. That's why I'm doing YouTube, dude. That's why my, you know what? I'm just not a compliant guy. That's why I ran into some hashtag 2503 shit out in West Texas. Because, you know, one thing I'm not is I'm not a compliant, sweet guy. And I'm learning to accept that about myself. In fact, I'm learning that maybe Jesus doesn't even want me to be a nice, sweet guy. Maybe he wants me just to be Jonathan Fibonacci. Hala. All right. Boundaries, limitations. Caesar Milan. Wisdom. Prophetic voice. Good music. You guys have a great day. Email me. Love you, Mom. Thank you. I love you so much, Mom. Hala shakala, green dollar, hire me. Come speak to your church, your business. I promise you'll be entertained. I promise you'll learn something, even for the 2503. Maybe I'll talk to you about organization. I'll bring my 10 years finance experience here. Maybe I'll just teach you how to sing along to the song. Because I know I'm a gifted teacher. Ain't bragging if it's true. Hire me. Email me at americana417 at gmail.com. I just want to be a teacher. I'll be a comic. I can tell you jokes. But you got to understand, I'm going to be me. You're going to be me. I'm going to talk to you about the Bible. I'm going to talk to you about the Enneagram. But mostly, I'm going to come to your organization. I'm going to say, how can I help? And you're going to be like, oh, well, you can do this. Well, no, no. How, why are you paying me this kind of money? You're like, well, what we really need is we need this. And we're going to get to the real issue. That's one thing I'm really good at is getting to the real issue. And then I'm going to be like, all right, pay me a lot of money. We're going to fix it. And you might say, well, John, you only fixed 80% of that. I'm like, hey, dude, you found me on fucking YouTube. Pay up, holla. All right, you guys be good. Email americana417 at gmail.com.